So today's video, I don't know how many of you guys out there this is going to uh, hit home for or not, um, but it's just something that I live with and uh, I just wanted to share my experiences. If you don't know what OCD stands for, it stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And this is a real thing. This is not, you know, something that, it, it, this is an actual, it's in the DSM, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Now, when you have Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, it can make life hard. Um, because you basically have these obsessive thoughts, like, did I turn the lights off? and the compulsion to keep making sure that they're off. Um, there are so many different forms of OCD and, and, and there are so many different things, you know, just because one person does one thing doesn't mean the other one does. Everybody's got their own quirks and things. Um, but for me, um, being in a family business of art supplies, you know, I naturally, you know, I'm always doing art stuff and it's a struggle because I am very germophobic and dirtophobic and everything needs to, like I have to, oh, it's, it's, it's miserable. So, so I've, I've mentioned this before, I basically do art in a dark room with this, a single light because if I look around and see anything else uh, in the room it'll bother me. But for those of you artists out there that do have obsessive compulsive disorder, um, these are just some of the things, my coping skills, I guess. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not a therapist, that's my wife. <coughs> She's my therapist. She's not. She can't be legally. Uh, but uh, but but these are just kind of like the things that I've kind of learned that help me. Um, the first thing is, depending on your situation, it is important to make a space that you dedicate to being messy. It can be a corner of a room. It can be. Uh, you know, its own studio. The, the point is you have to kind of get it in your mind. This is a place where I create and everything in here, I, you have to remove ownership of. Like, I don't own any, like, this isn't mine. This is, I'm just making a mess. You know, it's just basically. So when you're thinking about a space that you want to allow yourself to be messy, for anybody out there that has ever watched this television show, it hasn't been on in years. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Friends. Uh, in one of the episodes, you find out that one of the main characters, Monica, who has definitely obsessive compulsive disorder, has this secret. And that secret is she has a closet that is an absolute mess. It is her, it is her area where she just lets everything loose. Now, she's not doing art in there. In fact, she's not even real. But, I mean, Courtney Cox is real. You get what I'm saying. Um, but that's the idea. You need that Monica closet for your art to kind of release yourself of, of worrying about it being perfect or clean uh, as best you can. Have your messy space if, uh, if possible um, because that will sort of alleviate some of this uh, pressure or tension that y you might find. Um, what I like to do, um, and I have two here, is now for me, watercolor, I work on a flat surface. I usually get one of these um, cutting mats, depending on how big of the desk I am working on. Uh, this is the one that I use at home. This is one for the office. And it just gives me a nice clean surface. These come in a assortment of different colors. Um, if you're a watercolor artist or a marker artist and you think that uh, working with markers um, or watercolors staining this will bother you, I recommend getting one in black or green. Uh, they come in different colors um, because then at least it's not as noticeable. If you're working with opaque colors, like acrylic or uh, oil, it's going to show up just the same. Just the same. It's going to show up just the same on um, on the black that it will to clear. So I can remove ownership. I can I can mentally prepare myself that this is a space that's safe to get dirty. However, I cannot remove ownership of my hands. Okay, um, I'd like to. You know, it would be nice. It would be a nice little. Um, I don't know why it would be. I can't release ownership of my hands, which means that my hands need to be clean because if I get anything on them, all I will be able to do is focus on the spot that's dirty and until I clean it, 
I will not be able to do anything else. So, I mean, there's the obvious stuff. Um, you know, some artists, uh, and even artists without obsessive compulsive disorder, wear gloves. Just safety reasons, you know, you're working with heavy metals in some of these paints, um, and it definitely prevents you from getting paint on your hands. However, there are some people that do not want to wear a glove. They say it ruins the sensation. Uh, they, they, want, they want no glove, but they want the love. So what are you to do? Um, I am one of those people, hence my father. Uh, I am one of those people uh, that find these to be, I don't know, my hands get sweaty and I, I don't know, I just, what I do like is called gloves in a bottle. Okay, now you don't need to use a lot of it. And I'll just kind of show you. Um, this is not going to prevent um, paint from sticking to you. However, in my experience with this, what I found is when I apply it, and I, I even applied more than I had to, you, you really, a little goes a very long way. Um, it makes the paint easier to come off my hands. Like it cleans up a lot easier. I'm not scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. Um, and it also protects you from those toxins and stuff. So that's why it's called gloves in a bottle. When it comes to uh, keeping your hands clean, you can wear the gloves in a bottle. There are all kinds of things like these um, Soho Studio wipes. Uh, you can use those to clean surfaces. Uh, it says that they're safe for your hands. Um, just a great little go-to thing. It's like the baby wipe for the artist world. You know what I mean? We're living in a baby wipe world and I'm an artist girl. Doesn't make any. I've done videos on uh, the throwaway journal and that's another great thing. Uh, I talk about removing ownership of that area. You, you want a safe space to make a mess in. Um, and, and especially like, you know, you can put one of these over furniture, um, but even if you start to get stains on this and it starts to bother you, um, you know, you, you can replace it or try to clean it or, you know, whatever, but it will protect your furniture. And this translates everything from, you know, your, sur uh, your uh, painting surface to your actual painting surface, that canvas, that, that pad. Um, you know, we did a, one of our very first artist problems was new sketchbook syndrome, where you have that new sketchbook and it's just so precious, you don't want to damage it because it was, oh, it just looks so pristine. And what I did was I did a, a video where I explained that I keep what I call a throwaway journal. So just to kind of fill you in, the throwaway journal is, it is a sketchbook that I have told myself, I'm going to throw this away. I might not throw it away, but I'm not going to tell myself that. Don't you tell me. I tell myself, I'm going to throw this away. In fact, I wrote on the cover, nothing in this book matters. And that removed a little bit of ownership from it for me. So when I go into that journal, I don't have expectations of like, oh, I need to make these masterpieces or, oh, I don't want to mess up this page. I'm going to throw it away. That's what I'm telling myself. So um, having something, throwaway journal, uh, just e even to get your ideas out is really great. Um, now, for those of you uh, like oil painters out there, um, for me, I know one of my OCD things is making sure my brushes are friggin' clean. Um, I uh, I recommend obviously you know a brush cleaner like Chelsea Classical Studios lavender brush cleaner because it's non toxic. Um, they also make this lavender uh, soap that's really good. So. This will actually not only continue to clean the brush past the point of the solvent, but also conditions the hair as well. So this is a really good product by Chelsea Classical Studio. Now back over to my watercolor artist peeps out there. Yo, yo. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, one of the things that I do every time that I'm using watercolor, now I've seen other normal people do watercolor and they open up their set or whatever and their palette's a mess. They've got paint everywhere. Not me. No, 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 no. After every color mix, I find myself wiping it up. And what really will drive me crazy is every now and then I use a staining color and it leaves this stain on my palette. So, you know, whether that's a porcelain palette or a plastic palette, um, it can stain. So this is actually pretty cool. This is called Turner Palette Cleaner. And all you do is just apply it to an area that you want to clean. Let it sit on there for a couple minutes and then wipe it with a dry rag. 
And this will kind of restore a, you know, a white palette to looking white and not having all those stains on it. Um, I know that this is a little nitpicky. I know that this is a little specific for me. Um, but the point of the video is for everybody watching that might have obsessive compulsive disorder, um, I think it's important that you share what your experiences have been, what you do, because what I do might not work for you, but what you are already doing for yourself might work just fine. If you don't have OCD and you're still watching this video, I appreciate that. You just love me and I love you back. The biggest thing that I, I want to kind of reach out there and say is if you are an artist with OCD, you are not alone. You are not the only one. There are other people that are going through it and um, trying to find ways to make it work. So again, please, in the comments below, be sure to share your experiences, what works for you, what drives you nuts. I think people like to hear everything like that. And also, please be sure to subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to make these. Yes, uh, subscribe to uh, Jerry's Adorama. I don't know if we can put a little thing up here. I don't know. I don't know. If there's nothing up here, then we can, but I'm sure you know how to subscribe because you're on YouTube, so. If you are obsessed with something um, and, and you are compulsed to do something, um, what you should be doing is following me on Instagram, at Mike Now Jerry. Yeah, that's right. Did you see it? Yeah. I worked on that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at Mike Now Jerry, where we have some additional clips, behind the scenes stuff. Um, baby stuff. Not even a baby anymore. Oh, she's a, she's a toddler. So I, I have to have another baby so I get more baby stuff. Um, yeah. So just, you know, it's, it's a, it's a little bit me. It's a little bit what we're doing here. You know, whoever these people I'm talking to, um, we haven't met. Uh, so yeah. So Instagram. <laughs>you know how I stay calm? I am heavily medicated, okay? That is the God's honest truth. It's like a Hulk moment. Like, that's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry.